Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about the counter class from Collections, which is another really really useful data type for, uh, in particular for interviews. I guess you can use it in real life, but I find that it's more useful for interviews than anything else. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Alright, so I'm going to explain how counter works and then I'm going to show you a particular interview question as well as several solutions to it, um, including one where we're going to use counter. All right, so let's fire up our Python interpreter. The counter class lives in the collections module, so you'll need to import it. So from collections import counter. And what counter is, is it's a mapping type that's specifically built to count things. <laughs> I guess that's why it's called the counter. Um, but it acts kind of like a dictionary mapping some key to integers. And you can make one. Uh, just by constructing it. By default, counter starts empty. So you'll see here, we just kind of have an empty counter. Um, you can increment values on it. So you can say like CA plus equals one. And now your counter has a particular value here. Uh, you can also, what is the method called? Uh, you can also do C dot, I believe it's update and pass it in a sequence of things. Um, so you can see here that it went over every value in the sequence and it incremented the count for those. You can see that CA went from 1 to 2 and uh, B went from 0 to 1 because B didn't exist. Uh, in a way, counter kind of acts like a dic uh, default dict of integers. I actually did a video on default dict. I will link that in the description. Um, you can kind of imagine a uh, counter being, oh, we got import collections collections. You can kind of imagine counter to being collections.default dict int and this works in a lot of the same ways as you know a counter does. Now one thing that uh, you won't get from default dict that you do get from counter is you get this most common method which is really useful for looking up the you know top of a, a popularity of your counter. So if you say see that most common one uh, you'll see that it returns back a because that was the most common. You can also give it, uh, you know, an integer here. If you leave out the value, it just sorts based on the um, the highest values. Um, but this can be useful for getting like the top n counts, for example. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about counter is the constructor takes the same arguments as kind of this, uh, you know, this update method here. You can either have, you know, a, a mapping of uh, of, you know, numbers to their counts. So you could say like A4, B6, or B5, sure. Uh, and that will, you know, add, add the values of this mapping, or you can take an iterable. So if you did like, you know, A, A, B, uh, you can see that I can update that there. And you know, because it takes any iterable, a string is actually an iterable as well. So you could do c.update, uh, you know, a string, a string like this, and it will iterate through each character and, you know, count those out for you, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think that's all I really wanted to show. I guess the last thing to show is, you know, if you pass an iterable as the string here, it will build a counter and count the, you know, iterable things in here. You can also do that with like a list. So if you wanted, you know, a list of strings, now your keys can be strings. And you can see like we counted two A's in one of these ASDF strings. Okay, but anyway, that's that's counter. Um, and now I wanna show you an interview question that spoilers, counter is a really good solution to, um, but I'm gonna show you a couple other solutions to this problem as well, in case you want to solve it in that way. And the problem that we're solving today is a problem called is anagram. I've actually been asked this on probably I don't know, six or seven different interviews. Um, actually, <laughs> oddly enough, I used to use this interview question right when I started out interviewing, but I ended up switching to a different question because I found that everyone kind of knew this question because it's a pretty common one. But anyway, we're going to be implementing is anagram today. If you're not familiar with what an anagram is, uh, two words are anagrams if you can kind of rearrange the letters uh, and they're the same. So like an example is... Uh, the word table and uh, bleat. <laughs> Those are two words that are anagrams. Um, some kind of edge cases that you'll want to think about as well as like, what does the empty string mean? Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we go for writing test cases for this uh, implementation here. 
And when I first saw this problem, uh, the first thing that I kind of jumped to was uh, set math. And sets actually don't implement this problem quite correct. Because um, you can imagine if you had like foo uh, as a set, this will get you just the unique characters. Um, but if you had the word of, that also matches this. But these are not anagrams because they have different lengths. Now, of course, you can use the length to kind of solve this. But it, again, that doesn't quite solve this either because... Uh, you know, you could have FFO uh, set FFO or set foo and set uh, FFO. And even though these have the same length, they're they're actually not anagrams because they don't have the same set of characters inside them. Uh, but the first solution that I kind of reached for before I, you know, thought of the counter solution is by just sorting the two strings. Because uh, if you sort, you know, sort table and sort bleat you'll see oh that's sorted right because we're in python uh sorted <laughs> why did i type sorter twice uh you'll see that if you sort these two words you're going to get the that they are the same and this is one way of validating that they contain the same characters so you know a, a very simple solution for this is return sorted w1 equals sorted w2 and this, this solution works, and honestly, if I saw somebody that reached for this solution while I was interviewing them, they would probably pass this interview because this is reasonably efficient. It's going to take, you know, n log n to sort this and n log n to sort this, and then an o n comparison to check that they are the same. Um, and n log n is, you know, a decent solution to this. But we can actually do better than this, and that's where counter comes into play. Uh, a counter, we take counter of table. What a counter gives you is it gives you a mapping from the characters to their uh, counts. And so uh, if you take both table and bleat and count both of them, counter bleat, uh, you'll see that, you know, these are actually equal. <laughs> counter table. Uh, and this doesn't really care about ordering or sorting, so we don't have to take that additional overhead to sort these. Um, and so, you know, a better is anagram. Anagram by sorting is anagram w1 stir w2 stir. Oh, this should have been bool, not none. What am I doing? Uh, return counter w1 equals counter w2. And so this is kind of, you know, a, a better, more efficient solution there. Oh, we, of course, need to import counter. From collections, import counter. And uh, when I do interviews, I usually like to write some test cases to validate that my implementation is correct. And so I'll usually jump to a series of edge cases similar to what I kind of explained over here, where, you know, this would break the set solution or like this would break the, the length solution, um, you know, the sorting solution and counter solution work. So <laughs> you can't break those. Uh, but I would usually write a few sets of test cases here. I'm going to actually use PyTest to test this. So import PyTest. We're going to use pytest.mark.parameterize. And we're going to have word one, word two, and expected. This is going to be our kind of table tests here. Test is anagram uh, w1, w2, expected. Assert is anagram w1, w2, is expected. And uh, I actually go over parameterize in another video, so I will link that in the description as well. It's basically a way to write out a bunch of test cases at once. Um, so I'm going to start kind of with our, our trivial case, like the empty string should be, you know, an anagram of the empty string. Of course, the anagram, the empty string is not an anagram of any non-trivial string, so you can do that as well. Uh, and two non-trivial strings that are different should not be anagrams. But of course, you know, any any string that is actually an anagram should be true. And these are kind of like the cases that I would start with. And then I would kind of think about some other, uh, you know, solutions that would be close to being correct, but not quite correct. And so I would kind of jump to like, you know, they have the same characters, but they're not the same length. So I would say like, you know, foo and of uh, should not be. Um, but then we, of course, we saw that like, these ended up being the same set length, so we would probably do another case like that. Foo and FFO uh, should not be. And then I would probably, you know, expand out test cases from there. 
let me just make sure that if we install PyTest and run PyTest on this, that we pass our test suite to that Py. Cool, you can see that you know we, we pass all of these various cases here. But anyway, that would be how I would approach this interview question, kind of some of the things that I would think about, some of the things I would talk about during that interview, uh, but also kind of a neat way to flex using counter. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.